Good morning, or depending on when you're listening to this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio. So today, I am coming with, I suppose, I can claim that this is a requested video. A little while ago, I did a video about Zanea's break. There is a link in the description, unless I forget, in which case... Please remind me. And I told you there is another Zanaeus that we were not going to look at in that video. But I said to you lovely ladies and gentlemen, look, if you want this video, then I I might be persuaded. Stick a whole bunch of comments down, and if enough people comment, maybe I'll do it. Well, quite a good response, quite frankly. So today, we are looking at the Rainbow Road Zanaeus. Now, Zanaeus is one of those Pokemon who, quite frankly has almost been good many, many times. So we looked at the Geomancy Zanaeus previously, and there used to be a deck which was played by a few people, and you would use the Aromatist that could move around Fairy Energy at your whim, and what you would do is you would play the Geomancy Zanaeus to get a whole bunch of Fairy Energy on the field. You would play some Rainbow Energy, you would play... Aromatist to move the energy around, and then you'd have a variety of smashy attackers. You could use Pokemon like Lucario to hit for quick damage as a fighting Pokemon, or Manectric EX to use, you know, some cheap attacks to hit quite quick and moderately hard with Electric, trying to always hit for weakness. And of course, there's the Zanaeus break that I talked about in my previous video. Today, we're looking at the Rainbow Road, the Breakthrough Zanaeus, named after that Mario Kart track, or series of tracks, I suppose, that comes around on every Mario Kart game, because this is truly a rainbow deck. You want to be using as many different types of Pokemon as you can, because we have the ability Rainbow Force. This attack does 30 more damage for each different type of Pokemon on your bench. I.e., two different types of Pokemon on your bench. A lightning and a fire, for instance. 60 damage plus 10, 70 damage. Fine. But let's say you get a bench of five, and they're all different types. Well, now we're at 160, because you've got 30 damage times five different bench Pokemon. Add the 10, 160. And this has seen a little bit of play here and there. Now, you can use it with Skyfield. This is the stadium card that allows you to have up to eight bench Pokemon. And if you can get eight different types out, well, then we are talking about 240. Add the 10 is 250. The setup required is too much. Not to mention the fact that even if you choose to use rainbow energy, so you can attack with a variety of attackers, in standard at the moment, we don't have aromatis. So we can't move this energy around. So we are going to look at just using rainbow force. Power creation, 160 for 4 energy if you were healed the previous turn. I mean, it's fine, but it's expensive. Although there is Fairy Drop, which will heal 50 damage from a Pokemon with Fairy Energy attached. So that's all right. Nice little item that sees very little play. But what's different is, in the latest expansion, Steam Siege, we got dual-type Pokemon back. That means that each of these Pokemon counts as two types, which means each of these Pokemon on the bench will add 60 damage to Zanaeus' Rainbow Force attack. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are rolling. Now, by my counting, and I might have missed one, but I don't think I have, we have eight dual-type Pokemon. But as far as I'm concerned, for this deck, we have three. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through the three that you should be using, we're going to look through the five that you shouldn't be using, and then we're going to look at a few other Pokemon to slot in if you feel like it. So first up, we have Galvantula. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Night March has just ceased to be a good deck, and Joltik might be seeing a little bit of play because Galvantula evolves from Joltik. Now, he is both lightning and grass type. And he's got an interesting, if not particularly good, attack. Double Fred does 30 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, this has received an errata. An errata is basically words that Pokemon have officially added to the card but they're not written on the card. So even though it doesn't say it, this cannot hit the active. It can only hit the bench. It was mistranslated from the original Japanese text, so it cannot hit the active. As a side note, the Joltik from Steam Siege might only have 30 HP, but he also has free retreat, which means if you start with him, you can retreat to a better starter. This we like. So 
This is quite useful because, of course, if you're hitting weakness and you do apply weakness and resistance on the bench, you're hitting for 60. And what's weak to lightning? Shaman. You could, in two attacks, KO two Shaman EX for four prizes using Galvantula. It's not something you're going to do very often. It's not something you're going to do every game. But some Night March decks actually started using this uh, at Worlds this year. You know, because you're playing Joltik anyway, why not? And it was really, really useful in KOing things like Shaman. You won't often get two attacks before it's KO'd. It's only got 90 HP, but it's useful. We also have Volcanian EX. He is both fire and water. And what I love about him, he is a basic. Now, his ability is quite funky. I did a whole video on Volcanian. Link in the description. If I forget, let me know. So I'm not going to go into Volcanian in a lot of detail. What I will say is you're unlikely to be using his attack because it takes two fire energy. Even if you play Rainbow, and I'm not a fan of playing Rainbow in this deck, you've still got to use two Rainbow here. Don't like it. As for the ability, it's really good if you're attacking with basic fire Pokemon. But you won't be. So it's kind of useless. And the other one you really should be taking very seriously here is Bisharp. Now Bisharp covers both dark and metal types. And he's actually got a really, really good attack. Of all the ones we're using here, he has by far the best attack. Retaliate, 90 damage. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack during his or her last turn i.e. not knocked out by an ability, think Greninja Break, or Poison, etc., then you do 90. But you're hitting for both Dark and Metal Weakness, which means that you'll be one-hit KOing if they've got 180 or less HP. That is pretty nice. Now, it's not something we want to be doing. Zeneas is our attacker here, but it's a nice little backup option. Now, if we get those three dual-type Pokémon... We've got two stage ones and a basic, so the setup is more than most decks, but it's not horrific. We've now got grass, electric, fire, water, dark, and metal. You get all of those out, now we got 190 damage. Six types times 30 is 180, add the 10. This is pretty good. But the thing is, we're not really rolling with six types here. We're rolling with eight. Colorless is a type. Shaman is a colorless Pokemon. This is a Pokemon deck in 2016, slash 17. Or, if you're watching this a few years in the future, back in the past. But trust me, people of the future, Shaman EX was very, very good. So you'll want to use some Shaman, so there we go, there's Colorless. Whether you want to leave Shaman on your bench, that's up to you. But there's another type. And of course, you're going to want a backup Xerneas to try and make sure that you, you know, don't run out of attackers, so there's Fairy. So if you can get a Galvantula, a Volcanian, a Bisharp, a Shaman, and a Spares and Naeus on the bench, well now we've got eight types. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, 250 damage. And you don't even need Skyfield, just so we're clear. Skyfield here allows you to have eight bench Pokemon. Here, you only need five, and it's as good as having eight. And this is where the kind of the, the beef, the meat of this deck comes in. So, let's have a very quick look at the other dual type Pokemon and have a quick discussion about why we're not playing them. Shiftry, it's a stage 2. Yes, it's part grass so you can use Forest of Giant Plants. It's a stage 2. You're not going to be playing Forest of Giant Plants in this deck. If you're not playing Skyfield, might I suggest Fairy Garden? You'll be playing basic fire energy, especially cards like Volcanian EX with a retreat cost of 3. Your opponent's going to be trying to grab in the active, stick it in the active, get a cheap KO. Fairy Garden means nice, easy retreating. So you don't want to be playing a stage 2. Now it does have a nice attack, 120, if you've got the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent. And hitting for both grass and dark weakness. But I don't think it's worth playing just for the attack. It's a stage 2. You're already playing Grass with Galvantula. You're already playing Dark with Bisharp. You don't need Shiftry. Volcarona is both Grass and Fire. And, no, it's only a stage 1, which is fine. And it does have a nice attack. 
120 damage, hitting for both grass and fire weakness. Which means if you come across something like a Mega Sceptile, for instance, one hit KO. Yay! The big problem with Volcarona here is the fact that you have to discard all free energy to do the attack. And as we're going to talk about at the end of the video, keeping your energy is what gives you the win here. Not to mention we're hitting Grass with Galvantula and we are hitting Fire with Volcanion. You don't need this Pokemon. To be honest, the, the deck you would most want to hit Grass Weakness against nowadays is probably Greninja. And Galvantula can KO two Frokies on the bench in one attack. So you don't really need Volcarona. Mega Steelix, it, it's a mega Pokemon. It, it's too much of a risk. Not only that, of course, but let's not forget that mega Pokemon, you have to end your turn to evolve. Unless you've got a Spirit Link attached, which means now you've got a Stage 1, but you've also got to play the Spirit Link. Now, it does introduce fighting as a new type, Metal is covered with Bishop, but this would be your only fighting Pokemon. Let's be clear about it, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need it. As I've said, we've got eight types covered. And I feel very similarly, in fact, very similarly, again, about Mega Gardevoir. I like Gardevoir. Gardevoir is my boy or girl, depending on how you see Pokemon genders, in Pokemon Tournament. I like Gardevoir. I want to play Gardevoir. Mega Gardevoir is both Fairy and Psychic. But we're already hitting Fairy with Zeneas. We don't need Psychic, as I just said with Mega Steelix and Fighting. We've got enough types already. And let's face it, we don't really want to be playing a Mega Revolution Pokemon with the Spirit Link. And we don't want to be giving up our turn to evolve. The final Pokemon is Azumarill. And I'm not particularly against Azumarill. But why would you play it? As in Marrow, we're talking water and fairy. Well, fairy, we've got Zeneas. Water, we've got Volcanion, who is a basic, whereas As in Marrow is a stage one. And even in terms of attack, 60 damage on a head for a double colorless. Ladies and gentlemen, you have better places to use your double colorless here. Don't do it. Now, this does mean there are a couple of types we're not hitting. We're not hitting fighting. Now, if you want a cheeky little fighting Pokemon to use, might I suggest Carbink? It's a basic. It's got a retreat cost of one and a safeguard ability, meaning it cannot be attacked by EX Pokemon, which is kind of funky. Maybe you need to try and stall for a turn. It could help. We're not hitting Psychic. Now, you could use Hooper EX as your Psychic, but you're unlikely to be using many EXs here. I suppose you're using Volcanion and Shaman, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it here. If you really, really, really want a basic to use, you could use Mew and use the ability to copy Zeneas' attack to hit for Psychic Weakness. Or you could use Deoxys to draw two cards on your first turn if you're going first. Just an idea. Um, if you want a Dragon Pokemon... If you're playing Rainbow Energy, which again, I don't particularly suggest you do, you can use Latios to try and get some cheeky turn 1 KOs. Or you can use Giratina, and I, I like Giratina here, purely because, not unlike Carbink, it can't be hit by Mega EXs, which means you get some modicum of protection when you stick it on your bench. But I hope I've been clear about this, ladies and gentlemen. I think this deck, as for my money, and I've put a lot of time and effort into, you know, thinking about this deck and having a good look, and the way I see it, this deck has a clear construction. And as far as I'm concerned, you've got Zeneas as your main attacker, you've got Shaman just to draw cards, and then the dual types you want are Galvantula, Volcanion, and Bishop. I don't think you need any others, and I certainly wouldn't recommend playing any others. So, this all sound amazing. What's wrong with the deck? Well, basically, there are two threats to the deck, and they're basically both the same. It all comes down to energy. If Rainbow Force was an attack you could use for a single energy, I think this could be really threatening to be the best deck in the game. But it's not. It's an attack which costs a fairy and a double colorless, which means two energy attachments. Now, there are a few things you can try here.
Number one, you can try and use Max Elixir, but with the amount of Pokemon you're playing, you're probably not going to be playing 12 Basic Fairy, which means you're probably not going to hit that many Max Elixir. Now, I did play against one online the other day that did hit three Max Elixir in one turn, but I don't think everybody's going to get that lucky. What I prefer far more, and it's not an early game solution, it's a mid to late game solution, I like EXP Share. With both Zerosic and Startling Megaphone rotating out of the standard format, that means that when your Zeneas gets KO'd, your Zeneas on the bench with an EXP share gets his Rainbow Energy. Now this does mean you have to not play Fighting Fury Belt onto that Zeneas, which would put its HP up to 160. Also allows you to do 10 more damage, but if, if, if damage output is an issue, your deck hasn't set up and you're not going to win. But I think EXP share is slightly better here. Max Elixir, I just don't think you're going to hit it often enough because I don't think you can afford to play as many energy as you need to do to hit it often enough, to be perfectly honest. Now, if you're really worried about Mega Decks that can one-hit KO, and decks like Mega Rayquaza are a problem here, you could even play a Pokemon like Klefki, it attaches for just a single turn as a tool, but it means you can't be attacked by Mega EXs. Because, here's the thing, when this deck sets up, it's amazing. And if you find yourself playing against a Rainbow Road deck that has all these Pokemon on the bench, and two Zeneas with two energy on each, you've probably lost. To be perfectly honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. There are two ways to beat this deck. Number one, you stop them getting the energy out. And you can do that with quick KOs using Pokemon like Mega Rayquaza, or even using cards like Enhanced Hammer, for instance. But otherwise, if they get going, they're probably going to win. So you either stop them getting the energy, or you run them out of energy. And that's essentially how you beat the deck. This is not the fastest deck in the world. If you are very lucky, on turn 2, you're going to have Zeneas with 2 energy, and you're going to have two stage ones and a couple of basics on the bench. That is the best case scenario. And that is not always going to happen in every game. When it does, you're probably having a good game. But if you're playing this deck, I implore you to think about energy. You need to get the energy out and you need to keep it there. And cards like EXP Share are what I'm thinking of here. Like I say, with Zerosic and Startling Megaphone both rotating out, getting rid of tools is now very difficult, which makes cars like EXP share far, far better. In terms of Stadium, you can play Skyfield here. It certainly helps in order to give you that bench space you need. But I would be a bigger fan here probably of Fairy Garden. Now, I don't think either is the wrong play. Fairy Garden... I think one of the problems with this deck could be if your opponent uses Lysander to pull up something like a Volcano in the X and you can't get it out the active. Fairy Garden really helps with that. Now this is not the only way to play the deck. You could play the deck playing far more of these dual type Pokemon but actually attacking with them and using Zeneas as one of many attackers. I think that's going to make the deck far less consistent. I also think it's going to make it very matchup based, i.e. play something you're hitting for weakness, good times. Play something you're not hitting for weakness, bad times. I think there is a consistent hard hitting deck to be made here and I hope I have explained it well enough. You know the deal ladies and gentlemen. There is a comment section. Tell me what you think about this deck. Do you have a list you'd like to share with people or offer for critique? I don't know. Might be worth a look. Click the like button, come on, please. And of course, click that subscribe button. And if you already have, get a friend to subscribe it on your behalf. And of course, by far the most important thing, as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.